Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial, my name is Attempster. Today I'm going to be going over how to add a blurring pause screen to your games in the Blender Game Engine. So as you can see here, I have a very simple scene, and when I press the pause button, uh, the whole background scene will blur, and then we're presented with these options in focus, and then if we resume, it goes back to the original unblurred version. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up here to File New and open up a new blend file. Then I'm going to go up the top here, go to Blender Game, GeoSL, animation frame rate of 60, X and delete the cube, Shift A, we'll add ourselves some terrain, S to scale, and then 20, or S, and then 5 as well, just to make sure it's large enough. Now we just need some movement to move around the level, so I'm going to open up this toolbar here, scroll down and then FPS setup, I'm going to click add FPS setup. If you don't have that option, don't worry, it's an add-on I wrote for the Blender Game Engine, so there'll be a link down in the description below if you want to go ahead and get it. Basically what it does is this right here, it just adds in a player and now you can press play and camera view and you can look around and jump and that sort of thing. So now that we've got that set up, we're going to press N and then T to get rid of these. Up the top here, change it to Game Logic and then we're going to move around, go back into texture view let's make our lighting a bit nicer, so here we'll change it to a sun and maybe rotate it around, give it an orange color shift D to duplicate, and here hemi, give it a blue color alright let's make the sun energy of 2 and something like that should be good, so let's give ourselves some, oh, give ourselves some reference objects, so some cubes here and let's give them some different colors so material here, this one may be blue uh, this one will make a new material and choose green new material orange and then one for yellow and then the last color can be maybe red or pink alright so there are, are five different colors uh, let's just move them around a bit. So we have some references to sort of blur. Now what we're going to do is we will just quickly change the sky color. So horizon color maybe give it a blue color. Okay, that looks a bit better. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to add a filter to our camera. So with the camera selected here, go to the render settings, move this up. Now to add the blurring effect, we're going to be using a depth of field script. So there's a link down in the description below if you want to get that script. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using another add-on that I wrote called the post-processing filters add-on here. Uh, and we're just going to be using the depth of field from that. So that's got a whole bunch of other filters in it as well if you want to use those. But if you just want to have that one filter, there'll be a link down in the description below. So with the camera selected, and down the bottom here in the post-processing filters, I'm going to make sure depth of field is selected, and then we'll click add filter. Now it's going to give us a warning message saying make sure the camera clipping is the same in the filter script and that's basically just to make sure that the blurring is correct and that sort of thing. But in this tutorial what we're going to do is we are going to use that to our advantage and purposely make it the wrong number to add ourselves some blurring. So first of all what I'm going to do is over here we're going to go to the focal length, give it something like 100, make the f-stop 10 and then we're going to scroll down here in our script in the depth of field .geosl. We're going to scroll all the way down and we're going to set the Z near to 10 and then we're going to set the samples here to 5 or 6. Again this is going to have a sort of effect on your performance so just choose something that works well with your PC. Uh, then what we're also going to do is turn off autofocus, make it false, turn on manual focus, so true and then the depth of field start, we're going to have one depth of field end uh, at the bottom for the fall off, we're going to make that something like 70 alright, and that should be all the settings we need the max blur you can also turn up if you want, maybe to something like uh, 3 uh, but the rest of it seems fine alright, so now what we can do is press numpad 0 and press play and we should get a nice blurring effect like so. Now if you'd like to still change this then feel free to change some settings in here. Uh, for example this max blur we can maybe turn up to something like 5 and then you'll sort of see that we start getting these weird pixelated edges. Uh, if you do need that much blur what we can actually also do is under here add ourselves another filter 2D 
This time we're going to choose blur and make it path number one. Put that in there, press play, and that will help smooth it out just a bit more uh, so you don't need to turn up the samples. I might turn the uh, max blur down to something like 4.5 and then press play. And yep, I'm happy with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a sort of overlay for our pause menu. And we're basically going to blur the screen, put the overlay on top, and then we're going to unblur the screen and remove the overlay when we resume the game. So this here I'm going to call my main game, and then I'm going to make a new scene, copy settings, and then call this pause. Then I'm going to press numpad 7, shift A, add myself in a camera, and then just move it up like so. Then I'm going to press numpad 0, and shift A, add ourselves in some text. This here can just be a title for the pause menu, so pause, paused, and then we'll just move that up here, as to scale. All right, that seems good. Uh, just for now, I'm going to press Alt-C, convert it to mesh. What you usually want to do in a game is try and avoid that, because as you can see now, uh, we're wasting lots of vertices and faces on making some text, which isn't really necessary. Uh, most of the time what you do is you'd use an image or something with an alpha background and just use that instead. But for now, we're just going to be using the mesh, just because it's nice and easy. So in the settings here, I'm going to give it a new material, shadeless, and just make it white. Then I'm going to press Shift-A, add myself in another text, and here we're going to make it resume. Oh, no, enter. All right, back to object mode, S to scale, and we're going to make that a bit smaller. So scale this up, and scale it down. Again here, we're going to give it the shadeless white material. And we're also going to go over here and make it no collision for both. And this one here, you'll notice, is still a text object. So I'm going to press Alt-C and convert to a mesh. Make sure it's also no collision. So now we need some sort of sensors behind it to detect if we've clicked it or not. So I'm going to press Shift-A, add myself a plane, scale it in, SX, and then move it below. So GZ, and then just move it down. Uh, and then we're going to press SY. All right, so just sort of like a border. Uh, keep this one static and also select collision bounds. Control A and apply the scale. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to give it a new material, this time sort of like a gray. And we'll also make it shadeless. All right, something like that, maybe a bit darker. Okay, then this one here we can call the resume button sensor. So maybe just uh, resume sensor. And then I'm going to press Shift-A, add myself another plane. And we'll do something similar for the paused. So just move it below, give it the same material. Uh, and this time I'm going to make it no collision because we don't need to detect anything here. Because the paused won't do anything, it's just a title. So we'll just move it up here. Then on this one, we're going to add some game logic. Let's go over here, add ourselves a mouse. And then we're going to add two of them. One of them is a left button tap. The other one is mouse over. We're going to add an and. Join the two together. So here I'm going to add myself a scene actuator. Join that in. And this one here is going to be remove scene. It's going to remove pause. And then we'll also add another scene. And it's going to be called resume. And we'll choose main. Then we're also going to do one more thing, and that is to disable the blur filter. So we're going to do that with a message. So here we're going to join that in, and here we're going to put in remove blur. All right, so that's done. Now we can go back to our original game, this one here, and we'll minimize those two. Now when it gets the message, so let's choose a message here. When it gets the message remove blur, once we receive that, we want to remove this blur filter. So we're going to go over here to 2D filter, remove filter, and we want to remove both filters, so pass 1 and pass 0. So here the depth of field is pass 0, and the blur is pass 1, so we want to just make sure we remove both of those. So here, add an and, join it in, and join those last two bottom ones in. And here what we need to do is, instead of always, we need to make sure that the player has actually paused the game. So instead of always, I'm going to choose a keyboard, and let's just make this P for pause. Then also select tap, and under here what we'll do is we'll add a scene. So add two of those. One of them is going to be suspend scene uh, main, 
and the other one is going to be add overlay scene pause and we'll join those in to the top one here all right now one more thing we need to do is we need to add uh, the mouse so we can see what we're doing on our pause here we're going to add ourselves in an always and we'll add ourselves in a mouse join the two together and make sure it's always visible then we're going to go to our main here add an always add ourselves in a mouse and make sure it's always invisible so this is going to work once once we start the game but when we unpause it's not going to work because it only happens once so we also need to join in the message here to make sure that it turns off whenever we remove the blur so now if I press play uh, we'll have our normal scene if I press P it's blurred we have our pause menu and I can click resume and we're back to normal again so yeah that's pretty much it that's how to add a blurred pause menu to your games in the blender game engine hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial if you did feel free to leave a like comment or share down below all of that stuff is greatly appreciated if your one didn't work out or there's some sort of problem with it or something like that again there'll be a finish.blend down in the description below but otherwise hope you enjoyed the tutorial have an awesome week and i'll see you guys in the next one